So this is a uh, high tech today. High tech. Yeah. Do you know it's been so long since we've done this? Uh, the Vineland Studios have actually gone to sleep. Yeah, Vineland Studios are broken <laughs> <laughs> through neglect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We've had many technical issues over the years, as many people will know, including, you know, the famous Lost Podcasts. Oh, the Lost Podcasts. Oh, the Lost Podcast series. Yeah. What did uh, they talk about? Who knows? I don't uh, know. This one is more a, uh, for, for those techno- techie people out there, it's a door problem. Oh. A D-A-W as opposed to D-A-W-L. As opposed to a Jim Morrison. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, hello Garage Band. Which I've never used to record anything before. Uh, so when it comes to editing and getting this up, <laughs> if you pardon the expression, it should be quite entertaining. It might take a, might take a while for this podcast to appear. Oh gosh! <laughs> but at least we can see that it's I it, can see some with sound yeah. recording and stuff. Excellent. So that's, wow, this is good. Yeah, it's a good start. Anyway, happy new year and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Happy Burns Night and um, happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, and, and, and uh, uh, whatever's next. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. pancake day. Okay, Excellent. Anyway, we're back. Uh, as per usual, our first podcast, we will, we will round up the BBC Sounds top of the year, top five. Um, and we'll also throw in a few albums. I think we'll uh, start with the al- al- albums. And we will start with uh, the return, the encore, no less, um, of the specials. Oh, That's yeah. their eighth studio album. Uh, Amazing. Their first since '98. Mm-hmm. And their first material with Terry Hall since eighty one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so it's been a while, shall we say? I'm just doing the maths. It's about what forty. Uh, just 30, short of forty 30, years. Terry 30, Hall. 30 years. Yeah. Blimey. Well, um, what did we think? What did I think? Shall I kick this off? Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, it's all right. This. All right. <laughs> no, I've been, told, I've been told by a friend I have to try harder. Um, so. What I enjoyed about this album, I, I think this was actually a very accessible album. It is a very accessible uh, album. It, it, you do not, it, in some sort of, yes, because if, <laughs> as we've just alluded to, if you're below a certain age, and that's that age is probably quite middle aged now, and you've never heard an album by the specials before, then this might sound startlingly fresh to you. <laughs> um, which is amazing when you think about it, um, when you think about the history of the band and the, the combination of, of sounds that, that back in 1981 was so revolutionary in terms of the music landing on the music scene and going mainstream here in the UK and then you think about the huge gap that there's been between Terry Hall the rest of the band being together and where we are now so um, I thought you know for, for, for a um, encore yeah a eh? um, see, like, see what they did there yeah. see what they did there um, I think I think it's pretty pretty solid uh, and solid in the, the bloody good solid rather than the, you well, know, than the, the meh. Meh solid um, of which more later of which more later so for me, this album, I, I think lyrically again, what was always special. Oh Jesus! Um, what was <laughs> about the specials? Uh, yeah. About the specials was uh, the, the um, you know the commentary that they offer. Obviously, that their lyrics, you know, it was always very cutting edge, very social. I, I mean, I'm t- telling you know my grandmother to suck lemons, but for those of you that don't know, they were always a very right on political band. Yes. Of a time when right on political bands were you know, so post punk, sort of pre post new wave ish um, period where. Obviously, lots of social change had happened, uh, lots of um, um, change in the demographics and culture of the country, uh, lots of change in the culture of the music, and we're right at the peak of Thatcherism in terms of, you know, the rough end. Yeah, of absolutely. Is, is pretty much it's dawning upon the band. And do you know what? They haven't lost that at all. And I think it's a sad reflection of the times that sometimes you need a band like the Specials from like way back when to um, come back and comment on social media, feminism, race, guns, and all the stuff that's in here. And everything else. Yeah. And everything else that they talk about. Um, yeah, the general parlous state of the world. So overall, I like this album. I liked it because it was short, but I liked it because it was punchy. Um, I don't think overall, I don't think it's what I return to. Uh, but as I say, I think it will pick up some new fans. Yeah, it'll maybe. definitely appeal to old. Yes, I think it definitely appeal, appeal to old. Um, I agree. I think it's, I think it's a, it's a indeed a good solid album. Um, it 
it's basically the kind of album you'd almost expect them to make when they when they come back. So you've got some stuff that's very much, I would say, classic, special sounding. So uh, the current single "Vote Vote for Me," um, mm. for example, which even cheekily starts off with a kind of an allusion to Ghost Town, Ghost Town in its mm. first few mm. first few mm. bars. Um, yeah. Which, which I quite quite like, um, and other songs like "Embarrassed by You," which also have, have mm. that same thing that it, it could be on any specials album. Um, what I did like about the record record is, particularly in the earlier earlier tr- earlier tracks, um, particularly uh, the the opener, which is a cover of the Equals song, Eddie Grant's previous band. Um, and uh, Black Lives Matter. They both have this kind of um, Marvin Gaye, um, Curtis Mayfield kind of musical vibe yeah. going on in the back- background, which is kind of adds to the kind of what you'd expect of, of the kind of Jamaican ska reggae influences yeah. that um, would be more expected, I suppose. Um, also, it's interesting that they decided to cover if you like, Lunatics taking over the Asylum, which obviously uh, one of the Fun Boy 3's first first singles, um, which is obviously when Terry Hall and Linville left the specials. Yeah. Um, so it's quite interesting, quite interesting yeah. again to have a come full circle on that as well, <laughs> of, of bringing that back into the thing. Um, and I really liked, uh, again, talk about using different kind of influence and stuff, the the kind of riders on the storm, mentioning the mm. mentioning the daughter there, uh, Ron hey. coming up in the life and times of a man called I Depression. Like this thing. Which is that kind of have it's kind of mixed between kind of Ian Jury, David Byrne esque mm. spoken stuff with a bit of West Coast Yeah. Sort of Americana like, going on in, in, in the in the background, which is quite nice. Yeah. Um so I thought uh yeah, I mean, obviously there'll be people there saying that they're going, oh, well, there's no Jerry Dammers and there's no Neville Staples, sure. so therefore, yeah. oh, the can't really special, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it is. It is. Um, it is. And as they say on the far track, we sell hope. Mm. Um, yeah, it's good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Moving on, as they say, or as we say, frequently. Um, Often, apparently. Yes, the fifth studio <laughs> album from Sharon Van Etten. Um which was written while she was uh, pregnant and also getting a degree in psychology, as you do, um, in between the last album and this album. Uh, we reviewed, actually, both the, of them. Pre- uh, the, 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 both the previous, previous two. The last yeah. one, Are We There? Uh, yeah. We did back in, on podcast six of 2014. Um, uh, that album and the one ones before it were definitely much more uh, guitar driven indie records um, I'm interesting I had a listen today and, and apparently we both found the last album a bit disappointing compared to the previous album um, in, fact, in fact we both described it as a bit soporific in parts although it both, <laughs> both said that it ended well um, <laughs> this one clearly goes more, more of a soft synth approach that could make it even more soporific feet um, and certainly the opening track, I Told You Everything, I think definitely skirts close, but it's a track that I really like. I, I, I like the way it opens up with that kind of lyric of sitting in the bar, I told you everything, yeah. this is holy shit, you almost died. Um, and that sets the kind of tone for me, lyrically at least, for the album, which does seem to be have, have that kind of self-assessing, self-reflecting kind of mm. vibe going through to it. Um, I, find the, I find the album struggle to get going for me. Yeah. But then... When it does, which is around about Comeback Kid, mm-hmm. it has a good run of about four or five, four or five tracks that we really like. So Comeback Kid, Jupiter Four, mm. um, Seventeen, mm. uh, New Shadow, particularly, mm. um, which were all really good tracks. Yeah. Um, but this, but because the, the start of it is a bit kind of. Uh, I found it hard to engage with the album as a whole, so a bit like the previous the previous the previous album. Whilst I think there's definitely good stuff in it, 
overall it was still a bit kind of oh, yeah, could have been better yeah I it's funny <laughs> funny because um, the the best review I had of this album was the first time I sat down and listened to it because in a in a sort of weird parallel universe each time I listened to it again I found myself more and more disengaged mm. um, I found it increasingly soporific <laughs> although I have to agree the album did end well ha <laughs> ha um, it, for me the first time I listened to it I thought this is a really good mashup of um, you know sonic sounds bit of electro bit of bit of goth um, you know bit of rock guitars all in there um, found that the album was very difficult the first first track I didn't really didn't really hit me but when when no one's easy to love the second track sort of mm. gets going and you have that sort of that the bouncing along of the melody I actually quite like I really like that um, and then as you say middle of the album come back kid Memorial Day and the very cheerful use of the arcade fire-esque yes uh, what was it um, 17 mm. very yeah I think it reaches a peak there before so very maybe taper off just a little bit and then, and then coming back at the end yeah. um, but I found that actually the more I listened to the album and I've listened to this one about three or four times I just found it harder and harder mm. and the last time I listened to it I was like oh, I'm going to have to go this chewing up this again <laughs> and I found it but, and that's a really odd experience because normally opposite, as we've said yeah. time and time again the opposite is true yeah but I found on repeated listenings that I just I just disengaged completely which which leaves me in a very worried state for my uh, music reviewing uh, career. <laughs> if, if this is how the year starts, <laughs> well, let's it, hope it doesn't. Well, it'll cut down on listening because you know, <laughs> <we're thinking> <laughs> <laughs> it's only been once because this chance starts to get worse. That's fine. Yeah, it's yeah, as good as it gets. So, so really odd to experience this album. And yeah, I, I, I recall, I recall the last review as, as saying that. No, oh, it sounded sounded like something we might say. And, and I, I recall actually being more more impressed with, with her because I, I know the name and I'm like, yeah, we like her, I think. Um, so, yeah, a little bit disappointed. So, oh, moving boy. on. And in front of moving on to another band who we last reviewed back in 2014. Did we? Uh, so, again, Blood Red Shoes. Uh, oh. and this is their fifth album. Right. Uh, we reviewed the fourth album, which was the uh, self-titled fourth album. On podcast three in 2014. Did we like it? Uh, did we like it? Hang on, what is... Uh, you said great indie pop album, very enjoyable. And where are you getting this from? Are you actually from the podcast? <laughs> are you actually please? listening yeah. to the podcast? Yeah, Blimey. yeah. It's been a year I'm adding that extra dimension to our podcast. <laughs> either, that or, either that or just had some spare time this afternoon. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. Um, Excellent. Yeah, uh, whilst I, uh, I kind of said... Um, I was still waiting for them to make their great album. Right. I think it was a solid album. But, okay. Uh, and they'd made several solid albums, and I was still waiting for that moment when they okay. were going to cool. move up yeah. from solid. Are we still waiting? Don't know, Pete. You, you, you tell me. I think we are. Yeah. I think we're still waiting. I see, I don't recall, recall listening to this band before. <laughs> great start. Um, so for me, for this particular album, um, I kept getting this really heavy 90s rock, alt rock vibe from time to time um, and again a bit like the Sharon Burnetton a little bit of sort of the rock goth space alongside better known you know there's that, there's, there's that niche of bands mid 90s that sort of on the wave of the sort of post grunge industrial scene yeah. that sort of emerged predominantly from the US I'm thinking of Nine Inch Nails obviously but there were many others Yes, but the many others is what I'm thinking of in terms of her vocals and some of the some of the not the, the entire album for sure, but some of the tracks, um, uh, which you know, like especially like the track "Nearer," which I really liked actually. Yes, uh, it's one of one of the tracks that has synths and stuff. Yeah, in it, it has synths and stuff, but it also has that in, sort of industrial sound. Um, but then it moves on to the dirty disco, as I've described it here, of um, the track "Beverly," which again sort of harkens back perhaps a bit further into sort of electro rock kind of sound. Um, and then the style shifts again, more towards indie, towards the end of the album. And I'm thinking specific, even shades of Britpop. And I'm thinking mm. specifically of the track Anxiety, which I actually, by the time that track had finished, I was actually thinking about Franz Ferdinand, so bringing it, oh, okay, bringing yeah, it forward. That, yeah. So, um, so, and then back towards the end of the album, back into heavier guitars again, 
um, like Vertigo and Elijah, which I think is the last track. Yes, Elijah. Yes. Yeah. So I, this album again sort of went through this sort of wave of alt rock indie nineties style. But my problem with the album, if if I have a problem, is that it never really landed in one space. Okay. Yeah. So if it had stayed like nearer, with maybe some of the dirty disco sprinkled in. I'd have been like, yeah, I'd have been like, it's not an album. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but, but then it sort of shift, kept shifting styles, and, and I, could, I found that I could never sort of quite get into, again, quite get into the groove of, of, of the album as a whole. Uh, I agree yeah. with quite a bit of that, actually. Because um, to answer my own question, uh, I, I also agree that I think we are still waiting. Although I think we are moving in the right direction, albeit slowly yeah. in the right direction. Yeah, okay. Um, as you say, they, they, Laura and Steve, the Thanks. tube-set people <laughs> Thanks uh, for them. from Brightonshire, oh, yeah. uh, uh, do a nice line in, in the indie pop, really. It's, you know, yeah, it's, you know, as, 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 as you say, it kind of drags in kind of, you know, garbage, curve, blondie, plus all the bands that uh, you alluded to as well. Um and as you say, it is definitely a, a more mix of styles. I'm, I'm, I'm harking back again to the, the previous, previous album. I think the previous album was definitely more straight ahead um, pop rock than this. That definitely you can see them exper- experimenting more with stuff like Nira, uh, Beverly, and Elijah, which mm. all are all mm. are. Which I liked Elijah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Definitely have more going on to it than just. Boom, tish, boom, tish, yeah. brr, 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 kind of kind of stuff. Um, anxiety as well. I part that anxiety. Um, one of the few tracks that that he sings on that actually uh, resonated with me. Cause I tend to prefer the songs with her singing. Um, they do do the rock stuff good as well. Though, I, I, mean, I think uh, I I to I and Mexican Dress that kick off the album are both really good songs. Yeah. Um, but I would say. A solid Ura album. I hear it when it gets. Would be my uh, review on this. So definitely, definitely a step in the right direction. But uh-huh. I still think we're not there yet. No. Keep trying, guys. I know you appreciate the, uh, <laughs> the glowing review. The glowing review <laughs> and the uh, support and yeah. Just keep on the just, knackered old podcast. Just keep doing what you're doing. You'll be fine. <laughs> oh, so what about these new people then? Oh yeah. Oh, these kids, eh? <laughs> yeah. Let's let's do our other bit where we speak about yeah, the youth. Yeah. Uh, and in particular uh, to uh, the uh, Octavian, who is uh, the winner of BBC Sands, um, King Princess, uh, Grace Carter, Slow Thigh, and Rosalia. Um, I've got a slow tie. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, he gets my name wrong all the time, so, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, these five, we, and uh, I will say for the BBC's judging people, uh, an interesting mix of musical stylies. Yeah. Whether or not you like the musical stylies, yeah. which I'm guessing by the look on your face, it's, mo- <laughs> it's probably, it's probably going to be a, a, a no or mostly no, I'm guessing. <laughs> Did they pull something like this last year? Well, that's a good one last year. So, oh yeah, yeah, but that 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 was a foregone conclusion, I think. Yeah, it was. Yeah, um, but no, they, they didn't. They pull something last year in terms of the sort of broad styles. Possibly, yes. Um, no, I, I've I've written a few comments down here. I, you know, I, I just increasingly think when when we do these lists every year, particularly this particular segment, um, I, I just increasingly sound like an old man. I know I'm becoming an old man. But, you know, I caught myself writing this and, th- and then I crossed it out. Um, and so it's like, does all music have to sound the same these days? <laughs> and then I crossed it out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so old now. Because <laughs> that's not yeah. what we try and do here fundamentally on this podcast. We're, we're not doing that. We're not being two grumpy old men. I have no idea, I have no idea which <laughs> artist you were talking about there, but I, but I, I should say that in my notes I, I, I wrote uh, whilst listening to Grace Carter, so sounds like a lot of things I hear my daughter play. <laughs> well, actually, not to say not to say that it sounds bad. It's just 
it does have a bit of that Emily Sandy esque thing going yeah, well, on. Exactly. And you know what? I wrote something. I wrote something very similar under Grace Carter. So I put love the Bondian strings, uh, but again, I think in reference to another artist on the list, uh, same vocal style. Um, Adele and Little Mix have a lot to answer for. It says here. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, similar sentiment. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think that um, the state of of British pop music at the moment and, it, and this is more pop than rock than 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 rap than grind than than all the, the various other styles that they have covered in recent years i think this is the mo- to me this sounds like the most sort of accessible list that they've gone for possibly with the possible exception of the winner yes who i really liked even though he talks a lot about dicks literally uh, yes, he <laughs> did talk a lot about dicks, <laughs> which, which probably means I shouldn't read out my the here where, 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 where under here under him I wrote nope not feeling it. No, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. So, so I di- I wasn't really down with Octavian. No, I quite liked him. I quite liked um, Octavian. Um, but I was struggling. Do you know who my favourite favourite was though? Uh, I have no idea, Peter. I think it was Slow Tie. So I will say that, that that I think Dorman is one of the best tracks of the year. Mm-hmm. However, I found most of the other stuff was meh. Uh, okay, so I only went, where did I go? Which cut did I go to there? Probably Dorman. Yeah, it was Dorman. I thought it was. Because Dorman's great. Yeah, Dorman was really interesting. Um, I, I, and, and King Princess, I should also mention, um, whilst perhaps being rude, um, I thought I thought some of her sort of the slower stuff she did. I know, which featured Fiona Apple. Remember that? Remember yes, that? I do. I thought that was really good. Um, whereas the other stuff, I was just a bit meh. Yeah, I didn't mind her. She, I mean, she reminded me a bit of um, Marina of Marina Diamonds and yeah. Charlie XCX, that kind of thing. I quite like. Um, I re-listened to her today actually, and, and some of the tracks kind of resonated with me more today than they had. Yeah. Um, Initially, although similarly, similarly I, I, I liked some of the slower things as well. I liked Holly and Upper West Side, re- mm. really, really quite liked. Obviously, Pussy is God, God is quite funny. That's quite funny. Um, yeah. And 1950, which, yeah. Also, which, is, which is the song that kind of broke her, if you like. Oh, okay. um, it's also quite 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 an interesting interesting thing. Obviously, it's quite a lot of. Um, she just liked the ladies, uh, yeah. and, and obviously, her lyrics. Her, her ex- Reflect yeah. that, which yes. is nice to see. Anyway, um, and so I also found I, 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 I generally found uh, Rosalia, yeah. actually interesting. It's because it is that kind of thing of one, she's sing, singing in Spanish. Um, yeah, I like. And two, trying to trying to blend flamenco mm. with modern musical sti- styles. Yeah, I, thought I, I, thought really was, I thought it was actually I thought really interesting. definitely worth yeah. exploring f- further, but. Yeah. Um, Again, there was a song on that that I quite that I quite liked, um, which I'm clearly going to I got Cat One Aguriel. Yeah, I'm going to pronounce totally wrong, which is like yeah. uh, Penso Elan to Mira, uh-huh. uh, which uh, took my fancy and I quite, really, really quite liked. Um, but yeah, it was. I mean that that whole album, this that the current album is, but it's based on it's a kind of retelling of a kind of 13th century novel kind oh, of thing. So it's kind right. of. A, it's got a concept album. Got a concept album. Quite yeah. Clever one. Um, um, I take back everything I said about mainstream and pop music. Yeah. And yeah. I think she did quite well at the uh, Latin Grammys. Oh, right. Best two Grammy. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. Very good. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I could be Jacob Rees Mogg with a joke like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> specials. Uh, no. I think it has to be specials. I think it has to be specials, but um, for so early on in the year, I, I mean, I, I I always think ahead. Nothing's hit my um, your buttons. No, nothing's hit my buttons yet. No, did so. Um, um yeah. I think I think it might be a a slow burner this mm. year. A bit like the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Sometime maybe this year you'll get to hear this podcast when Scott figures out how to. Use carriage oh, well, maybe maybe we maybe we just do the next one and, and then release this later this year. Yeah, yeah. it's totally out of order. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, kind of cut up and do a remix. Indeed. Well, wherever you're listening to this, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
We're good to pub. Bye. Bye.